Alright, so here we have the Monkey Head Nebula, and we'll go ahead and uh, just uh, see what the uh, order data looks like. And from the get-go, let's go ahead and start uh, cropping the uh, images out where we know uh, we have just some rotations um, and some alignments that need to be taken care of. So um, let's crop that there. And let's move that in there. All right, I'll drag this off to the side so that I can then go ahead and apply the same exact crop to all three images. All right, and let's uh, just maximize there, see what we got. And then I'll go ahead and delete that since I don't need it anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize these and drag them off to the side um, because we will now use the channel combination to go ahead and combine these channels into a color image. So um, it's an SHO. So we'll uh, put the the, corner, the proper channels on there. Go ahead and apply that. And it says that uh, that is not the same dimensions. Uh, and that's because my O3 looks like is a different name. So the O3 that I want is O3-1. Uh, so I might have another O3 open somewhere named that. So let's go ahead and apply the correct one there. Go ahead and find where that other O3 is and just close it out. All right. Let's use our screen transfer function. Um, and again, these images are linear. Um, and so the screen transfer function just allows you to see what what Pixit site thinks is the, the ideal stretch for these images. Um, as you can see, there's a gradient of magenta on the right side to the left side. And I think that's due to the hydrogen alpha data. So let's go ahead and do a dynamic stra uh, dynamic background extraction uh, on the hydrogen alpha data. See if we can get that to um, even out a little bit. So uh, usually I put the tolerance to 1.5, and then go ahead and put that to 15 on the radius, and let's start putting points all around the uh, the image there. So let's go ahead and do subtraction uh, after you've uh, uh, got the points that you like. And let's stretch that out, see what that looks like. And then usually I don't uh, discard the background model. So let me go back and unclick, unclick uh, that there and subtract, see what the background model looks like. That looks pretty good there. Um, but let's go ahead and just add a couple more points, see if that changes anything. Yeah, 
let's look at our background model. Um, that's pretty good there. So let's go ahead and uh, you know just drag this off to the side and just in case we need to modify it. Um, but I don't think we will. Let's uh, minimize that hydrogen alpha over there. And let's do our channel combination again with the correct new hydrogen alpha. Alright, and you can see the difference there. One gradient uh, on the left there and no gradient on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just uh, delete that one there because we're not going to be using it. And let's go ahead and start working with this. All right. So from the uh, get-go here, let's go ahead and if we like this stretch, let's go ahead and apply that to our histogram. So let's go ahead and hit the screen transfer function and transfer that over to the histogram. Okay, let me move this up so that you can see. Then just drop it there and apply it. And then go ahead and ref refresh your screen transfer function. So if we select the image that we ha are working on, you can see that the actual data now has been stretched. And so, um, I will go ahead and just actually just uh, lower de-stretch this image just a little bit there, um, and that's where we'll we'll kind of start off with. All right, so I'll go ahead and extract the luminance image there because. Uh, I'll use this to, to get rid of a lot of the chromatic noise um, that's in the image. And is, if you can see it there, you know, you can see it all kind of in the background there. Uh, but before we do that, we want to generate our color masks. And um, uh, basically, if you generate it before, you, it bef uh, after you do the chromatic noise, they, they kind of just come out real blotchy. So um, let's do that first. Uh, not that. Let's go back. Script, utilities, color mask. And we're going to do it for uh, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And make sure you, uh, on that blur factor, you put it at three so that, you know, your mask does not come out very um, sharp on the edges. It's a nice, soft, um, smooth mask. And you'll see what I mean there. It, it just blurs it automatically for you. So um, let's do that again. And let's uh, do it for for a uh, let's do it for blue, and then hit uh, one two three, and hit OK. And again, we're gonna do this for for as many colors as we can kind of see and visualize in that image, to try to get some uh, distinction and some some separation between the colors there. Right now, it's a, just a full tone of kind of green. Um, and hopefully we can get something that has a, a little bit better um, splitting of colors.
Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that chromatic noise and we'll use our, our luminance that we extracted there and then uh, hit the chromatic noise reduction and go ahead and apply it there. All right, and you can see how, uh, if you toggle back back and forth, how that chromatic noise reduction really helps out in reducing that, that chromatic noise. Um, and uh, so we'll leave it there now. Now that we have our chromatic noise out of the way, we can go ahead and start playing around with our masks. So one of the first ones I'll start with is the magenta mask. And again, this is just to el eliminate any magenta stars or any kind of residual magenta left in this image. All right, and you can kind of see toggle things back and forth uh, how we are eliminating the magenta out of the image there. You can also try this with the blue mask and see if that uh, if you can do a little tweaking here and there to eliminate that as well. So let's go ahead and grab that green mask and let's uh, apply it to our image. I'm going to start playing around with the curves. Um, you know, there's no right way or, or wrong way to do this, but just get in there, start moving curves up and down and see what it does to your image. Uh, play around with it. Uh, you get a hang of what, what different colors do to your image, depending on what colors you have present. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, you just just get in there, move things around, and you'll you'll start to find things that you like that you don't like. And so, um, I'll I'll just kind of play around with the curves here, see if I can find something that uh, is heading in the right direction to where we want to go.
All right, so that is a good uh, good there for a green mask. Let's uh, get our other mask here and apply it there and see if we can play around some more with some curves and see what that uh, looks like. And in these curve functions, you have individual, um, you know, colors. You can stretch all the colors at the same time. You have luminance, saturation. Um, so don't be afraid to, to kind of play around with different uh, uh, curves and see what uh, what those do. Um, so this is going in the right direction of the colors that I want. I want to get some separation between uh, uh you know the deep gold uh, gold colors orange colors blue um, just to get as many different colors to kind of uh, really separate uh, and give you some structural um, definition there And again, uh, you, you can go back and forth between masks. Um, you know, just because you use the green mask once doesn't mean you can't uh, can't go back and try to use it again. See if you know once you've gone to a certain point, going back to that mask, um, you can get uh, get it to do different things as well. All right, and sometimes you can try to use um, your actual individual channels there. So let's go ahead and drag this out uh, from the S2 data and see if uh, we can uh, uh, just stretch this image because uh, right now it's in the linear form. So let's uh, first stretch it. Let's uh, refresh there. So what we'll need to do is um, you know, just remove the, the screen transfer function and then we'll go ahead and manually stretch it we're using the histogram transformation all right so just make sure you select the image so that you can see where your data points are going Now, one of the things that you have to kind of be careful is uh, this mask does include the stars. Um, so it's, you know, it, you got to kind of make sure that uh, it's not uh, doing things that you don't want um, to the stars or to the background. So 
um, sometimes you can you can do the, some of these curve adjustments and it looks fine um, other times you may not like what it's doing to, to the rest of your image so you may not be able to use it um, and again just just processing is just a matter of applying the masks there doing some uh, adjustments with the curve see if you if you like anything and if you if you do great if you don't you know you can just discard and move on to the next 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 mask and see if uh, it gets it gets you anywhere closer to where you want to be Um, other things you can do is use the SCNR tool to remove, uh, you know, different uh, color components. Here, you know, we can apply green, but doing that just kind of turns it into more of a bicolor image, which, you know, I don't, I don't like. I want to, want to get as many colors in there, in in there as I can. Um, you can try inverting the the mask there, and then. Uh, Doing the SCNR, um, and that that does pretty good. But let's go ahead and just do 50% of that and see if if we like that better. Um, let's go back to that uh, S2 mask. Okay, let's close this out. Um, let's minimize that. All right, the S2 mask. You can also actually um, do a mask from a mask. So you can do like a a range selection mask um but let's let's see you know still using this and seeing if that does anything that uh, that we like all right so let's get our our range mask so mask generation and then range selection and again we'll just play around with the parameters and see if we get a mask that we like so Alright, so that's a mask that uh, I kind of like there. Um, let's go ahead and apply it there. And let's bring up back our curves and see.
So now that um, you know we have an image that uh, we're pretty much happy with, let's go ahead and just set the uh, dark points um, to where we where we like it. So you can either try to clip some of the the, the blacks there, uh, or individually go between uh, each channel if you want to just fine tune any any kind of little colors or anything like that. Or you can actually even just de-stretch the whole image and then we'll come back and uh, with a mask over it just stretch it again so um, we can try that so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll kind of ex extract a luminance a synthetic luminance from here um, you know or you can use your old luminance or you can try to just extract the new synthetic luminance and apply that as your mask and um, go ahead and stretch it again using the curves and actually make sure your mask is enabled So I've put some anchor points and I've stretched the image there. Um, always toggle things on and off if you like it. Um, if not, you know you can again just try different things. You can also, you know, choose to selectively saturate some colors, you know, if you'd like the saturation of other colors, um, but um, just want to kind of saturate one color there. If we want to saturate the, those uh, light blues in there, you can choose to just put some anchor points, desaturate just to see what it does, and then, you know, start increasing the saturation. See what it does again.
All right, let's bring our image now into Photoshop. Um, we got a couple things to work on. Uh, you know, using the color mask sometimes can give you some residual effects there where we have some of these kind of greenish stars. Um, and they're mainly in the center here. You know, if we look at elsewhere, uh, you know, stars are white and, and yellow and orange and uh, really not too concerned, mostly concerned in this central part. So um, you can do color masking. Um, you can do star masks and all those things like that um, and I'm just going to show you a quick way that I have uh, learned to uh, deal with some of this um, for particular purposes we're just going to keep the stars white um, there are different filters that you can get um, this one is from Star Spikes Pro um, this is a nice little addition there to kind of uh, toy with your stars and uh, make them smaller bigger or anything like that um, so here are the effects that you can do. You have, you know, if you want to put star spikes, make just regular stars kind of glow. Uh, you have different effects there. Uh, but for, for this, I usually turn off the soft uh, flare, the ring flare, you know, the primary, all that is done. Um, I mainly have it on the secondary uh, effects here. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of create uh, a, a star uh, color that is going to eliminate some of this green glow that I have there. So if you turn this on and off, you can see uh, very subtle how the cores now become a little bit more white. Um, you can see here the presets that I have it to. Uh, quantity is 100, uh, spike sharpness at 0, a spike spread at 100. Um, right now color saturation, I mean if you wanted to colorize these stars, these are the green colors that you're, you're getting which I don't don't want. So uh, I'm just focused on making the stars white. So I'll just keep that saturation um, at zero. And um, all the other stuff really doesn't matter. This is more of, of color uh, and since you're keeping the coloration at, at the saturation at zero, uh, it really doesn't matter there. Um, so let's go ahead and um, go back up here. All right, so let's, if you bring the sharpness down, it kind of shrinks the stars, um, but then you would have to increase the intensity to kind of make them brighter. So uh, for me, I am, like I said, just trying to get rid of this this in, uh, this glow that that's on there and you can play with the sharpness there you know that's a little bit too big all right so you, you can obviously see how how much brighter the stars uh, do get um, which is fine um, you know we'll we'll deal with that in just a second there so the stars are nice and bright uh, and they'll go from that green hue to now having that color. Now obviously this does everything to all these stars but we're focusing on just working on these stars so uh, we'll mask this out in just a bit but since the stars do get a little bit brighter and bigger uh, Russell Croman has a nice um, star shrink application uh, plugin that you can use and basically if you your stars are too big you can definitely Go and fr get them from going, you know, real, real large to shrinking them back down. Um, you can choose uh, by radius. Um, so you can choose to just choose smaller stars. Um, you can choose to, you know, pick only the big stars. Uh, so it's a, it's a very neat tool to use there. And I'll put this maybe around five. And so we'll go ahead and apply that. And then you can see, you know, the stars do get bigger. Um, and maybe we can run one more application of this and see what uh, what that gives us. And hit OK. All right. So, um, you know, here we, we have some of these brighter stars do become brighter. Um, but overall, some of these, these stars even... We've actually gotten them to shrink and actually look a, a nice white color. So, um, and again, since this is only my concern in the middle, um, I'm just going to invert this mask that I applied here, and then just color in the areas that I that are affected there. 
um, which are kind of the central stars where our color masks had issues there. Um, and I will eliminate all those kind of green colors that I did not like. And again, this is all mainly uh, for cosmetic uh, purposes. Um, you know, at, at this point, we're just trying to make this image look uh, look pretty. All right, and then you can toggle that on and off, and you can see uh, how much nicer the stars look um, just by running that that application. And again, since none of the stars on the outside were really an issue, um, we're only applying this mask into the central stars. So let's go ahead and save this. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's save this as uh, Photoshop 2 um, and hit OK. And let's go ahead and um, open the Photoshop to here. All right, Photoshop to there we go. Okay, and then I am going to uh, image geometry rotate 180 degrees because this is the presentation that I would like to uh, show it off as um, you know and uh, again this is pretty close to to my final image here um, I think this in our final image here I have done a couple more tweaks as far as um, let's see we go from back from that rotation to this rotation um, you have a little bit more red, so let's go ahead and minimize that and see if we can work on on that color. Um, I'll just go ahead and put a luminance. I always like to work uh, with these luminances as masks so that my background is protected um, and mainly uh, we're only affecting uh, stars and luminosity. And so we'll go ahead and zoom in there. Um, you know, and this is a, a a great image here if if you're happy with this here um you got good uh, a good distinction between um you know deep oranges yellows a uh, couple of uh, light green hues and then some some blues there um, but if you're not a, a fan of of any kind of green um again you can kind of just play around with with the with the masks there um you can eliminate some of the green make it a little bit more red um, and then toggle things off and on there just for you to off and on and obviously when you decrease that green it uh, takes away from some of the luminosity so you can just uh, put a curve there just to counter it and then give you that that final color so let's go ahead and apply what that looks like and again it's, it's just a subtle image uh, change there if we go back and forward back and forward um, so I'm going to open up the uh, the final image that I came up with which is uh, the one that has a little bit more red uh, for you guys to see um, and I'll put that full screen so that's the, the the final image there I'll go ahead and escape there and as you can see, with the doing very little noise reduction, I mainly do use the chromatic noise reduction, but doing very little noise reduction um, keeps your image nice and clean. A little bit of grain in there, um, uh, that's what I prefer versus the plastic look of, of over uh, compensating for, for noise reduction. Um, I think this image looks a lot better um, and really you only you only start looking at that when you start zooming in pretty close and we're zoomed in here almost to a um, hundred percent so um, really looking at this image there's not a lot of noise that's on there uh, looking at it a hundred and uh, the image you know at 50 percent looks very nice and clean um, you know a, 
sometimes a less goes a lot a, a longer way as far as 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 you know what your images are capable of um, to me I don't like to put a lot of contrast the uh, you know there is some contrast to to kind of show the the structures but overdoing the contrast and overdoing the processing can really take a, a, a great image to a poor image so um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, this tutorial and found a found some things that uh, you can apply to your images and uh, hopefully this helps your images uh, improve.